Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today I am sharing some more high-end inspired DIYs. This first project is inspired by the square pressed flower plaques from Magnolia, but I am going to be doing the reverse for this. So I'm going to grab a chunk of my air dry clay, roll that around, warm it up, and then roll it out with my rolling pin. I'm making a square version. There's also a rectangle version, but for this one, I wanted to use the stencils that I got from Amazon. They are a bunch of little floral stencils and and I just picked one that I really liked and I'm pressing this down into my clay with my rolling pin and then it kind of left an indention of the stencil so I'm just using those lines to cut this down into the square and once I have this cut down into a square I'm just using my fingers and pressing along the top edges to make this look like the plaques from Magnolia and that was it for the simple dupe. For this next project, I thought this old world iron candle snuffer from Antique Farmhouse was absolutely adorable and I knew it would be super easy to make with some air dry clay. So I'm once again grabbing a nice chunk of my air dry clay and I'm going to start shaping this at the bottom where it kind of looked like the bottom of a bell. So I'm just doing that general shape using my finger to push the clay up in there to make the bottom of the candle snuffer and I really just kept working with it until I was happy with the shape of it. And right now at this point you don't have to worry about the handle just make sure that your clay doesn't break into pieces because you want this to be one single piece now once i was happy with the bottom part of this candle snuffer then i'm going to start working on the handle part i am squeezing and kind of pushing the clay upward as i'm doing that and then you can see i kind of rolled it a little bit but i was very careful not to mess up the bottom I even removed some of the excess clay from the top of this as I was squeezing it up so that it was not too tall and looked more like the one from Antique Farmhouse. And once I got the top piece kind of set the way I wanted it, then I did that kind of little twirly end on it, just like the one at Antique Farmhouse. Now you will definitely have to let this lie down to dry. It's not going to stand while drying because that top piece will fall over if you try to do that. So make sure you let this dry lying down. But here I am just taking a little bit of water on my finger and trying to smooth out any little cracks or anything that I see. But as you can see the next day when this dried, I still had a few cracks. But I'm going to show you how to easily fix this. I'm just taking some Dollar Tree spackling, rubbing this all over any of those large cracks that I saw. I did leave a few of the smaller cracks because again this is supposed to be an old world candle snuffer supposed to look vintage so I did leave a few small cracks. And once that spackling was all dry I just went back in with two coats of my black chalk paint. This next project is inspired by this floral covered glass hurricane vase from Anthropology, and I already had a few glass vases or hurricanes on hand so I just picked one that I liked the shape of 
and I'm going to be using this little clay mold from Amazon that has flowers and leaves on it. But for this project, I'm just going to be using the leaves and some of my air dry clay. And then I'm just breaking off small pieces and making a bunch of little individual leaves until I felt like I had enough to go all the way around my vase. I also ended up using that little vine piece on the mold and making a few of those so that I had enough to go around the vase and then I could just add in those little leaves. So obviously depending on the size of the vase or hurricane that you use then you may need more or less than I did but once I thought I had enough to go ahead and start putting this onto my vase I'm just using some gel super glue and I started out by attaching the vine part first and then I would just kind of add in the leaves randomly but if you remember the anthropology vase hurricane the leaves were kind of sticking up above the rim of the hurricane and I thought that was really neat so I did make sure to try and do that with most of the leaves at the top there you can see they kind of stick over the rim I just thought that looked really neat and so I continued to do that all the way around. And once I had all my vines and my leaves attached to my little hurricane vase, then I just rolled out another piece of clay and glued it around the bottom to finish it off. This next project is inspired by these tabletop birds from Antique Farmhouse. Now I just picked up this cute little birdie from my local thrift store and it was actually already painted white which was perfect for this project. And for the base I actually found a candlestick at my local thrift store and it was kind of already broken so I went ahead and just used my miter box saw to cut that bottom piece off. Like I said it was already kind kind of coming apart as it was and so I thought this would be really good for this project and then I can use that other half of the candlestick for something else. They also sell pieces similar to this little piece here in hobby stores like Hobby Lobby and they're definitely affordable or if you have extra candlesticks lying around you could also just cut the bottom off of one. So as you can see I just mixed up a nice brown color that I liked to paint that bottom piece and then whatever excess was on my brush I just kind of dry brushed it over my bird and then I used my finger to blend all of that in and this project maybe took about 10 minutes to complete and is just a really simple easy way to elevate these little birds that you can usually find pretty easily at a thrift store. But the final step for this project was just using some super glue to attach my bird to that little bottom pedestal. This final project is inspired by these paper mache bowls from Anthropology, and I've been wanting to make one of these for a little while so I just grabbed some paper that had been shredded in our paper shredder. Now if you don't have a paper shredder you can always hand shred some paper. I just got enough to fill up this little bowl and I'm going to add in a bunch of really hot water until it is covering all the paper. And once I had enough water in there I just kind of push the paper down into there and I'm gonna let this sit for at least an hour and while I was waiting for the paper to soak I went ahead and prepped my space I laid down some wax paper and then I just grabbed a bowl that I liked the shape of and the size of and I covered it with some plastic wrap now once the paper was soaked for an hour I just used my hand to squeeze out the majority of the water I would say about 
about 90% of the water I squeezed out. Now I've seen other people use like cheesecloth or something similar to that to get the water out of it, but your hand works just as well. And if you wanted to, you can put this into a blender with a little more water to make a more clay substance so it's not so clumpy but I really didn't care I wanted the texture and there are several different recipes for paper clay some of them include flour or cooking flour and I just did not want to go through all that so I decided to use one that just requires school glue but I also added in some Dollar Tree spackling to make this extra strong and there was no measuring. I just kind of eyeballed everything and as I'm mixing this with my hand I just kept adding in school glue and a little bit of the spackling until I was able to clump that in my hand and squeeze it and it would stick together. If I had to guess I would probably say I used about three quarters of the little bottle of glue and maybe half to three quarters of the little jar of spackling. So once once I had the consistency the way I wanted it, I started at the bottom of the bowl and just used small little pieces and started pushing them together. Now you'll definitely kind of know when your paper mache is ready because as I'm pushing this together, you can see it's just molding right to the other pieces. And just make sure that you're really pushing all your pieces together, kind of flattening it with your palm. And like I said, I started at the bottom of the bowl and worked my way down the sides and around the entire thing. Now, once you get this entire bowl covered, you're going to set this somewhere and you're not going to touch it for at least five days. Unfortunately, I was a little bit impatient and I did try to move my bowl on the third or fourth day and I actually cracked some of it and had to fix it but it was an easy fix. I just used some more of my spackling and a little more paper mache that I made up and kind of had to fix the pieces that I broke but definitely let this sit for at least five days. So this is what my bowl looked like after I had to fix it and after it had set for at least five days. It was completely dry and hard but if you look close enough you can actually see the spackling and some of the pieces that I accidentally broke off. So definitely just let this cure right here. This is the big chunk piece that I broke off and I had to fix it. I still like it. I still think it turned out cute, but next time I will definitely just let this sit for as long as possible. Now at this point you can definitely just leave your paper mache bowl the way it is especially if you're just using white shredded paper but my shredded paper had a ton of different colors in it so I went in with a couple coats of plaster chalk paint to paint this and I did the inside the outside and then I'm also going to take a little bit of darker paint and kind of dry brush it over that plaster color just to give it a little bit of dimension and highlight some of that texture. And once I dry brushed that darker color onto there, I also went back in with a little more plaster just to blend in all those colors. And then the final step for this was I just took it outside and I sprayed it with some of my Aileen's acrylic sealer. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed these high-end inspired DIYs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.